And I take the example of Kant because he sums up um, Cartesian tradition, its critique. So Cartesian tradition has two streams, empiricist and rationalist, through Locke, uh, Hume, etc. And rationalist tradition, Spinoza, Leibniz, Wolf, etc. Um, and Kant sort of, uh, I shouldn't put Wolf there, because he's more like a Leibnizian. Uh, uh, rather than original Cartesian. Um, and Kant sort of uh, synthesized these two traditions and crit crit critiqued them and tried to come up with a new synthesis. And the reference point for Hegel is Kant. Obviously, Spinoza as well is very important for him. But Kant is his immediate um, background, I, I would say. Not immediate, but you know, general background. And for Kant, thinking is thought is there's a basic dichotomy between thought and senses, in a sense. And senses, I mean, just to be crude, has a direct contact with the object, even though it's not entirely true. But let's say that. Thought, on the other hand, is sort of, uh, the thought for um, art is basically concepts, inference, and ideas. Although inference and ideas, they're all related. Um, And our access to access to the object is through thought in combination with senses. There's no access to object, direct object, or direct access to object in Kantian term. And Kant sees it as uh, in a way veil between us. At least this is one uh, very persuasive uh, reading of Kant, us and reality, tale of thought and senses. And for us, uh, ultimately, there's no way of knowing whether reality is, well, we don't have any way of knowing reality as it is unless we become a totally different type of creatures. Because our openness to reality comes through our thought, which is a mediated access to reality. So that's, a, that's a one view, uh, one uh, reading of Kant. And Hegel's criticism of Kant here, um, is of the basic idea of thought, criticizing the basic uh, dichotomy or dualism between thought and things. For Hegel, there's no veil between things and thought because ultimately they are self-expression of the same reality. And um, Allah Iqbal is, in a sense, um, working on um, working with this um, idea, this Hegelian idea. It's, it's in a sense, a pantheistic idea. So he, he, Spinoza had a great influence on Hegel, and the idea is that the reality, ultimate reality of the absolute, is historically realizing itself and matter and thinking are uh, expression of that reality. And if they are expression of the same reality, then they are not fundamentally dichotomous. They are not alien to each other. They are expression of or self-expression of the same reality. That's a basic idea, a Hegelian idea. And I, I think in this these lectures, especially in the first two, two or three chapters, um, Allah Iqbal is working with this idea. And there's no... Um, uh, there's no wonder, there's no um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? There's no, um, this makes sense because um, Salam Iqbal was um, educated in uh, British Hegelian tradition of his time. Uh, and McTaggart was one of his teacher, uh, British Hegelian, and I'm, I'm sure he studied Bradley, if not with him, among others. Okay, so when he's saying that, um, and the reason for the failure is that they look upon the thought as an 